This is the 2019 Mercedes AMG GT four door, and it is the coolest new sedan on sale. Now, Mercedes doesn't call it a sedan. This is the four door version of the Mercedes AMG GT coupe, but Mercedes also calls this a coupe. So technically the name is the Mercedes AMG GT four door whatever. Anyway, the facts are these. This car has 630 horsepower. It costs over $150,000. And here it is. And today I'm going to review it. I've borrowed this AMG GT four door from Fletcher Jones Motor Cars, which is the Mercedes Benz dealership here in Orange County, California, Newport Beach. They're the largest Mercedes Benz dealership in the country, and they get the newest and the first of everything, including the AMG GT four door. This is the edition one model and it's about to go on sale. So here's a brief overview of this car. As you know, Mercedes makes the AMG GT, which is a little two door Cooper convertible that everyone seems to like. Well, this is the four door version of that, and it's offered in two versions. There is the regular AMG GT 63 four door, which has 577 horsepower. Then there's this, the AMG GT 63 S four door, which has 630 horsepower. Apparently an entry level model is coming later in the year. Now, both of these versions come standard with all wheel drive. The starting price for the regular AMG GT 63 is around $136,000, whereas the AMG GT 63 S will be starting from around $160,000. That's an enormous amount of money considering that the 617 horsepower BMW M5 competition starts from around $112,000, but the 680 80 horsepower Porsche Panamera Turbo starts at over $160,000. Plus, Mercedes-Benz would argue that the M5 is just a 5 Series sedan that's been turned into a performance car, whereas this is a performance car that's been turned into a sedan. Coupe. Hatchback thing. Whatever. Interestingly, this car doesn't sit on the same platform as the Mercedes AMG GT Coupe, but rather a modified version of the platform that's underneath the CLS and the Mercedes E-Class. Speaking of the CLS, that's Mercedes' other four-door coupe, and I recently reviewed that. I'll link that video in the description below, and I'm curious to see where this differs. So today we're going to find out. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of the GT63 S four-door, and I'm going to show you all of its quirks and features. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on this car, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of the most expensive Mercedes-Benz models currently listed for sale on Autotrader. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the AMG GT 63 S four-door with the buttons in the interior. Now this car has buttons just like you have in your car, but this car's buttons are better than your buttons. I'm gonna start with the ones in the center control stack. And the reason why I say they're better is because they're interactive button screen things. Take a look at this. In the upper left of the center control stack, you have this little switch and that changes around the drive mode that you're in. You can see the little screen next to the switch actually changes when you move between the drive modes and it gets better. Go below that and you can choose between manual or automatic mode for the transmission. And as you press this little interactive button it actually changes what it's displaying, which is really cool. Next, you have suspension. And once again, you can press this interactive button and it shows in real time what suspension you're in. So you don't have to look at the infotainment screen or the gauge cluster. It's actually showing right there on the button screen. The last button over on the left side of the center control stack is the one that adjusts the traction control. You press that to turn on or off the traction control. Now, next up, we move over to the right side of the center control stack. And you see at the top, another little dial that adjusts the volume for the stereo and you can see that as you adjust the volume it shows the current volume on this little screen next to this dial of course it also shows this to you in the infotainment screen but you can also look to this little dial control the other interactive buttons on the right side of the center control stack are also interesting the next one down turns on or off auto start stop the system that turns the car off at traffic lights to save fuel and the one down from that adjusts the exhaust you can have it 
in regular exhaust mode, or you can press that, put it in sport exhaust, and then it is displayed there that sport exhaust is active. Now you have a fourth button on this right side, and that one is blank doesn't have any function. Unbelievably, Mercedes manages to create blank switches and buttons, even when the buttons are these interactive screen things. <laughs> it's incredible to me. You can never buy a German luxury car without blanks, but the rest of the buttons are pretty cool. And it extends to the steering wheel. Now, on the right side of the steering wheel, you can see you have this little dial. And once again, this is a screen. You turn it and it adjusts the drive mode and it shows your current drive mode on this little screen in the middle of the dial that you turn, which is cool. And on the left, also very cool, you have another screen and two separate buttons. With these, you can adjust the current suspension setting and the traction control. You can toggle it on or off. So you have a bunch of buttons and switches in this car that are cooler, more interesting, more interactive than your typical buttons and switches. Now, speaking of interesting buttons and switches in this car, next I want to talk about the hazard light button, which is in the middle like it is in most cars, but in this one it is tremendously small. Look how tiny that is compared to my finger. It's the smallest hazard light button I've ever seen in any car. It's like a little toy hazard light button. Now, another very cool button setup in this car is what is around the button for the hazard lights. All right, so check this out. This car has this big giant screen set up here, the gauge cluster screen and the infotainment. They're just huge and they're not touch screens. In some other Mercedes-Benz models, they are. But in this vehicle, if you want to control that center screen, you have to use the steering wheel or this little control pad in the middle. Now, I'm a little disappointed there's no touch screen, but Mercedes has a great alternative. This little electronic panel around the hazard lights is like a physical home screen for the infotainment system. So you don't actually have to go to the home screen and take multiple steps every time you're looking for something. Instead, you just run your fingers over the panel and select, for example, navigation when it pops up, and you're there instantly. This panel functions like a shortcut home screen, and it's a brilliant idea that I hope everybody adopts in their cars soon. Now, next up, before I move into the infotainment system, I wanna talk about a couple of other things in this interior, and I wanna start with the ambient lighting. Now, ambient lighting keeps getting more and more interesting in modern cars, but this vehicle has a particularly unusual one. It has ambient light circles inside the climate control vents. You can see them if I cut my hand over them. Whatever ambient light color you have is displayed right there and of course it's in addition to the ambient lights and the door panels and the ceiling and all that stuff now next up another item with this interior it is absolutely beautiful a gorgeous place to spend time all the materials are fantastic carbon fiber stitching everything looks feels really good although it better considering the base price of the 63 s is hundred and sixty thousand dollars i especially like this little unbroken silver line that starts in the dashboard and goes on to the door panel and this little unbroken line of yellow stitching that does the same thing goes from the door panel to the dashboard but everything in this interior is really really beautiful as expected given the price point now next up another item i like in this car and a lot of vehicles in the ceiling next to the rear view mirror you have a sunglasses holder that drops from the ceiling not in this car you have a speaker and it's the same story in the middle. A lot of cars have a dome light in the middle of the interior on the ceiling. No, no, not in this car. You have another speaker. This car has the optional Burmester sound system, which costs $4,500 extra. And the result of that is Mercedes-Benz has filled this interior with speakers to provide you with the finest sound experience possible. Now, next we move on to the infotainment system and some of the technology this car has. Again, I'm a little disappointed the infotainment system isn't a touch screen, but when you start getting into some of this car's amazing features, you forget about that a little bit. One of those features is something called energizing comfort. Now, in your car, you want to be a little cooler. You turn on the climate control and make yourself cool. Fine. In this car, energizing comfort doesn't just turn on the climate control, but rather it provides an experience. So, for example, the refresh setting in here offers green blue lighting and a cool, refreshing breeze to whisk you away to the seaside. And if you set it to that, not only does it blow out a cool breeze from the climate vents, but it also changes the ambient lighting to match that sea side cool breeze of the refresh setting. So basically it tailors several different vehicle functions to provide you with a specific experience that goes beyond just setting the climate control temperature. But the best part of the energizing comfort section of the infotainment system 
is the training portion. Check this out. You can actually set the car to provide you with muscle exercises while you drive down the road. And you can choose between muscle relaxation and muscle stimulation. If you choose stimulation, it goes through a series of 11 different exercises you can do pushing up against the seat, straightening your back, etc., etc. So you can actively exercise <laughs> through a program in the infotainment system of your car as you drive down the road. And mostly, later when I drove this car, I attempted to do a workout as I drove down the street, but in fact, the car must be in park for this feature to work. I guess it's designed for rest stops on long drives to help you stay loose and keep active. Another amazing feature of the infotainment system is all of the seat adjustments it can make. On your door panel, you can move the seat forward, backward, up, down, you can do all the usual stuff, but there are so many additional options in the infotainment system. Check out, for example, this lateral cushion adjustment adjustment, you can dial it from 0 to 10, and when you do that, watch how the seat bolsters immediately change to provide less lateral cushion adjustment to grip you in place better. Go back down to 0, and the bolsters immediately do their thing and go back to give you a little bit more room. Really impressive to see. Another really impressive feature in this car is that it has a fragrance. Yes, that's right. You don't just have climate control, but you can turn on a fragrance in the infotainment system, and then the climate control will blow out both air and the fragrance to make your interior smell a little bit nicer. Now, unfortunately, this car does not have the fragrance canister, so I can't sit here filming this video and smelling all the wonderful smells. But Mercedes-Benz sells it through their dealers. You buy it, you stick it into this area in the glove box, and then it syncs up with the climate controls. And if you turn on the fragrance, it will blow a fragrance out as you drive down the road. Now, next up, moving on to the steering wheel, another item worth noting, something I've complained about in Mercedes-Benz models for years is that there is no next track button on the steering wheel, so you can just tap the wheel and go to the next track. Well, Mercedes now offers this incredible steering wheel with all these functions. It's beautiful, it's Alcantara, it's perfect in every way, except there is still no next track button. You can highlight the music selection, scroll over to it, click next track, but it's still a process. You can't just do it with the push of one button. Now, it is worth noting that Mercedes-Benz has stuck a next track button in the center controls above the touchpad, so you can go to the next track fairly easily, although there's no previous track button here. So if you want to go back a track, well, that's just too bad, I guess. You'll have to go into the infotainment system, the music player, actually find the previous track button and click on it using the touchpad. There's no shortcut button. But anyway, speaking of the steering wheel, forget about the next track button, but I want to talk about the gauge cluster because that is really the most impressive part. The gauge cluster in this car is incredibly configurable, more so than basically any other brand. And you have three different parts of the gauge cluster. One is the speedometer, which is fixed, but otherwise you can change the rest of the gauge cluster to show whatever it is that you want. Your trip odometer, your current safety settings, your media, radio, whatever's playing, your phone, your navigation. You can go through and adjust an enormous number of things in your gauge cluster, which is really, really cool. Most automakers don't give you anywhere near this level of configurability, but Mercedes-Benz does. And you control it all with simple controls on the steering wheel. There's a button and a little trackpad. You just slide your thumb over the trackpad and you can move between different items in the gauge cluster. You can scroll up or down. It's a really, really good feature. Very good design. The best gauge cluster in the car industry. And next we move on to the back of the AMG GT four-door, where you can see this is not your traditional vehicle rear seat. This is the back of a four-door coupe, and it has the these performance seats heavily bolstered like you would see in the front of like a sports car, but they're in the back of this car so you can take yourself and three passengers out on the racetrack. And I say three passengers because the rear of this car is only two seats. Due to these heavily bolstered performance seats, there's no middle seat in this vehicle. But you do have all the amenities back here. Like for example, the rear seats have their own climate zones individually. So this car has four zone climate control. And the rear seats are also heated. So you can turn them on and have a heated seat experience while you're being driven around on the racetrack. And they have cup holders in the center, which oddly are removable. You 
slide this little tab with arrows on it forward and then you can pull out the cup holders and then that's just a little storage cubby. And the rear seats even have a rear sunshade despite the fact that this is not a typical sedan with a typical rear window and trunk. You do have to manually put it up but once you do you are shaded just a little bit from the sun coming in through the back window. Our final interesting item the rear seats have, they have wireless charging back here. Rear seat wireless charging is not a feature you see in too many cars. A lot of cars still don't have front seat wireless charging, but this has wireless charging for the back seat passengers. Pretty cool. Next, we move on to the outside of the AMG GT four-door, and I have to say, I think this is a really, really nice looking vehicle. And I don't say that lightly because I personally have never really liked the look of the Panamera. Even the latest one, I think, still looks a little bit strange. And I also don't like the look of the GLE Coupe that Mercedes makes, which is basically just this, but raised up. But for some reason, I think this particular car with this particular design has finally managed to do the coupe hatchback performance car thing totally right and I think this is a beautiful car. Now, one of the most interesting exterior design elements of this car is undoubtedly the rear wing, which is quite large for a sedan type vehicle. But it's worth noting most AMG GT four-door cars will not have this rear wing. This one has it because it is an Edition 1 model meant to commemorate the beginning of this particular car. Now, this Edition 1 package is not cheap. In fact, it costs $18,400 extra, but it doesn't just include the spoiler. It has a lot of other cosmetic changes to make your AMG GT four-door stand out. Like, for example, the matte paint is included with the Edition 1 package. So are the little stripes along the sides and over the top of this car. It also includes a lot of stuff in the interior, a lot of the yellow stitching, the carbon fiber trim is all part of the Edition 1 package to make the car look more distinctive and special. Edition 1 also includes these giant 21-inch wheels. These are actually center lock wheels like race cars have and some sports cars. You rarely see them on a four-door car, but you do if you get the Edition 1. One other item in the Edition 1 package AMG fragrance. So that fragrance stuff I was showing you inside, that's not just typical fragrance. That's AMG fragrance. Now with that $18,000 Edition 1 package and the $4,500 stereo I was telling you about earlier, you can probably predict that this car is not exactly the base model. And indeed, it also has carbon ceramic brakes to enhance stopping power and reduce brake fade. Those brakes are $8,900 extra. Add up all the options, and this car has a sticker price of around $200,000 which is absolutely enormous, but most of the AMG GT four-door models will be a lot less than that, somewhere in the mid $100,000 range, directly competing with the Panamera. This one is only so expensive because it's an addition one with basically all the fixins. Now, next up, we move around to the back of this car where there is a cool styling touch. You can see these brake lights are very thin and check out the turn signals, just this thin little strip of lights around back, reminding you of the AMG GT coupe and convertible model. I think that looks really, really good with the turn signals on. But anyway, around back here. Now, like I said, Mercedes calls this a four-door coupe. I personally think the idea of a four-door coupe is ridiculous, so I've been calling it a sedan. But actually, it's a hatchback, and you can see the back goes up like a hatchback, and this cargo area is open to the passenger compartment, so it is really a hatchback. Now, the trunk area is quite large in this vehicle, larger than most trunks in most sedans, but you can't put down the rear seats. There is a seating configuration in back that you can get for this car where the seats do fold down, but because this one has these grippy rear sports seats, you can't put them down in this particular model. So this is all the cargo room that you get with this AMG GT four-door. Now, next we move under the hood where you can see this car's power plant. This is AMG's four liter twin turbo V8. They've been putting in a lot of their models recently. It's an excellent engine. And in this car, it makes 630 horsepower, 627 pound-feet of torque. Truly impressive numbers. This car comes standard with a nine-speed automatic transmission. Like I mentioned, it has all-wheel drive, which helps with acceleration. And I say that because this big luxury sedan does zero to six in three seconds. Truly an incredible number. Of course, it also sounds great while it's accelerating. Take a listen to the exhausted sport mode. <laughs> A 
And so that's a comprehensive tour of the Mercedes AMG GT four door and all of its quirks and features. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the 63S four door and it feels really tight. Wow, the handling, the handling is just incredible. This thing feels really, really, really tight. Quite impressive considering its size. We know it's a big car, it's Panamera size basically. Well, it doesn't feel like that. It feels smaller and actually more agile. All right, I'm gonna give it a little gas. <laughs> wow, wow. That is really, really some, some acceleration. Very impressive, like a really good sports car. The mid-range is really incredible. Of course, that's been one of the great things about this four liter bi-turbo engine is really, really good mid-range power. The sound is just great. I love the sound, it's fantastic. It sounds like an AMG car should. I'm actually more impressed by the handling. When I was looking at this car, I saw it at the LA Auto Show, just when I've been filming it, I saw it's a big car. I bet it'll have the same big limitations as the Panamera, it'll feel like the big car. Um, driving it, I don't think that. This this car, maybe more than any car I've driven in quite a while, uh, eliminates the, the feeling of its size. It's really on rails. The handling is absolutely phenomenal. And the steering is not really too light. It steers very direct, very precise, and it just doesn't feel like a big vehicle. Sitting in a stoplight, everything is very, very quiet inside this car. You hear basically nothing from the outside. And you have a chance to take a look at the interior, which is fantastic. You have this combination of great materials and really, really impressive technology. I really, really am impressed with this car. I'm really impressed with the way that it drives. It doesn't feel like your typical Mercedes-Benz. Um, even my station wagon feels like sort of a big car first and then a fun, powerful, sporty car. Uh, this feels like like it's a sports car with four doors. It almost feels like the four-door coupe that Mercedes-Benz is trying to convince us that it is. And the acceleration is just indescribable. I mean, the throttle response in this race mode is unreal. You know, I drove the AMG GTR not that long ago, short enough that I distinctly remember it. This doesn't feel all that different to that, except I look back there and I got back seats and four doors. Oh, this is addictive, more so than, than a lot of other cars that I drive. And it feels more angry and more exciting than Panamera, which is a pro and a con. You know, some people I think will get in this car and maybe they won't want that, they'll have it in comfort, whatever. The Panamera definitely feels like more of a business type car. In the end, I was wondering whether this would just be basically like an E-Class or a CLS, but with different bodywork and maybe a little bit more power. And it really does not feel like that. This car feels a lot more focused, a lot more fun, performancy capable. Um, to a level that I really, truly was not expecting. Some cars underwhelm me. This one very much is the opposite. <laughs> I, I'm really shocked at how much fun the steering and the handling is especially, and also it's obviously very, very quick, very fast. The sound is good, the tech is good. It's a wonderful car in every way. I would love to have one. I just wish it didn't cost $160,000, $180,000. Crazy money, but I can start to understand how you justify it, especially compared to Panamera. This thing is, is absolutely on that level. It's a really impressive car. And so that's the Mercedes AMG GT 63S Edition 1 four-door, which is the most syllabled car name that I can possibly imagine. But that aside, this thing is great. It looks really good, it drives amazingly, and it has all this extra practicality due to its hatchback body style. The only real drawback is the pricing, which ensures that it will only really find a niche audience, but that's kind of the point. And plus, the CLS is the Mercedes four-door coupe for the masses. Anyway, now it's time to give this car a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the AMG GT sedan looks really good and it gets a 7 out of 10. Acceleration 0 to 60 is 3 seconds and it gets a 9 out of 10. Handling is really sharp, better than pretty much any four-door car I've ever driven and it gets a 7 out of 10. I almost gave it an 8, but that's true sports car territory and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Fun factor though is on sports car levels. This is so exciting and so thrilling and so tossable and so fun, I had to give it an 8 out of 10. Cool factor is a bit lower as this car doesn't have 
have the cool recognition of some rivals and its stupid name won't help, and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 37 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The AMG GT 4-door is loaded with everything you could possibly want, and it gets a 9 out of 10, falling just shy of a perfect score because there's no game-changing new item or crazy tech debut. Comfort is great considering the performance, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality is also excellent, though I prefer the look of top-end Audi and Porsche interiors. It gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is good. The hatchback bumps things up a point or two over a sedan, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Finally, value. In the GT I drove is just ridiculous money. It gets a 6 out of 10, but a more rationally equipped example would probably move up a point. Still, that gives you a daily score of 35 out of 50. Add it all up, and the Doug score is 72 out of 100, which is a huge deal because it ties the AMG E63 wagon for first place among the all-around practical sporty cars. When I went to review the AMG GT four-door, I was thinking it was overpriced. When I actually drove it, I was thinking it's one of the best cars I've driven in the last year or two. Rarely am I this surprised by a car, I just wish I could afford to buy one because I think I actually would. <laughs>